So today we're going to be looking at our HIC example of a tectonic hazard and we've studied the earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan in 2011. So the reason why Japan suffered a tsunami was they have based it on a plate margin between the continental North American plate and the oceanic Pacific plate. And when a continental and an oceanic plate meet the oceanic subducts beneath the continental. Remember these are huge thousand tons of rock trying to squeeze past each other caused by convection currents in the mantle and they get stuck with jagged rock and over time that pressure builds and suddenly the plates will slip as the pressure gets too much and in this case the plates slipped but caused an upward motion to the water above it and generated an incredibly large earthquake, magnitude 9, which then sent gigantic tsunami waves off towards the coast of Japan. So one of the impacts of this earthquake was the large tsunami waves that it created and went up to 10 kilometers inland. Unfortunately, the epicenter of the earthquake was incredibly close to the coast and the closest places had approximately three minutes from the warnings that got sent to their mobile phones to be able to get to somewhere safer and it really wasn't enough time and that meant around 15,800 people died and lost their lives which is very surprising for an HIC because they're normally extremely well prepared and Japan was very well prepared they had um, responses, immediate responses to the earthquake alerts went to mobile phones and computers and people knew the earthquake was coming and so they were able to get themselves in a more secure safe place to protect themselves from any falling um, items and they also had the tsunami warning. So this excellent system, really well prepared, however the earthquake was just so close to the coast that people didn't have enough time to escape and many people lost their lives. Another devastating impact of the tsunami was the impact to one of the nuclear power stations that Japan has to generate energy. The Fukushima nuclear power station was badly damaged by the tsunami, which led to radioactive material escaping into the water. Also along the coast, where it's nice and flat, there are many rice farms and the water salt water contaminated the rice farms which meant that Japan had to then import even more food. So there are some of your major impacts from the Japanese earthquake and then the tsunami. So we've already talked about one of the responses which was sending warnings to people's mobile phones. Immediately they put an exclusion zone around the Fukushima nuclear power station around 20 kilometers and evacuated people away. The scientists working inside remained to try and stabilise the power plant and to make sure that there was less damage. Another very quick response by the Japanese government was to send their army personnel to the affected areas. Within 30 minutes so just half an hour, they had sent 11 helicopters to the affected areas so they could help rescue people and get people to a safer place. So excellent quick responses. Now because the event was so large, Japan knew they wouldn't be able to cope just on their own. Normally they would be. They're absolutely fine. And so they accepted help from charities and other countries and charities such as Oxfam in providing temporary shelter, um, aid materials because it affected a huge area of coastline um, and it went up to 10 kilometres inland so it's a very large area and lots of people who needed support. Japan has a very very good um, response to tectonic hazards and they have a very long history of building incredibly strong, well, as shown by a very muscular house here, 
aseismically designed or earthquake resistant buildings. And it meant that when the earthquake struck, huge amount of energy, the buildings remain standing and there's very, very little loss of life directly linked to the shaking caused by the earthquake. So that is your Japan earthquake case study of an HIC 